Just a quick bit of bonus content for you right now. So I'm not going to polish this up or write any gags or do any of that stuff. If you want a new car, cheap card up there, dude. I want to talk to you about shackles because I've just seen some appalling conduct with shackles on YouTube and I've been down here fighting chaos in the fat cave and I thought this is a good time to talk to you about shackles. Most people's exposure to shackles, if they have any whatsoever in their life, involve one or two shackles just like this, like a baby bow shackle. And the classic automotive application for this kind of thing is the safety chain on the trailer, right? If you've got, under Australian law anyway, if you've got a trailer up to two tonnes, then it needs one safety chain and you'll have one of these shackles that holds the uh, safety chain on the trailer to an attachment point on the tow bar of the vehicle. And its purpose is just an insurance policy. If there's a catastrophic failure of the coupling, we don't want the trailer to sort of veer off into the oncoming traffic at 100 k's an hour. Above two tonnes, there needs to be duos safety chains, and they need to be crossed over underneath the coupling, and each one of those chains will employ a shackle not unlike this one. And most people get these right, you know, because instinctively, you tighten these up. And that's because they're subject to all of these slings and arrows of environmental bastardry like the wind and vibration and getting hot and getting cold and getting you know shaken and blown around all over town for weeks and weeks sometimes if you're on the big trip so doing these up makes real sense you just get the chain in place and then tighten this up and make sure it doesn't come loose happy days and that's what leads to the problem that I want to talk to you about because then, when you expand your repertoire to four-wheel drive recovery, you meet its big brother, which in this case is a 4.7-ton bow shackle. And you could also use 3.2. They're pretty common for standard four-wheel drive recovery in Australia as well. Just a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to carry around, I guess. They take up less room anyway. But the 4.7 ones, and the bow is really good because you've got lots of real estate for different things that you might need to attach, so that's nice. But a lot of people make the mistake, or they make two mistakes. So here's you, you've got a stuck four-wheel drive, you get all the rigging together, and then you attach it with a shackle. And even if you just do it all the way up like that finger tight, this is a problem, okay? And it's a huge problem if you then cinch it up because what can happen is all these loads that get imposed around the pin can serve to really tighten the shackle so let's say that you're out there in the boonies and you've just gone for a bit of a recreational day of four-wheel driving and you don't have any tools on you so to speak right you just only your mates and you do a shackle up like this and you recover some poor bastard out there and the load imposed by the recovery operation rotates the pin and tightens it to buggery and you can't get it undone. That's a huge problem, okay? So what do you do? You join to another vehicle, you can cut the strap or, you know, it, every solution at this point is imperfect, right? So I'd suggest if you ever use a shackle like this, instead of going all the way home, so to speak, when you tighten the pin up, you just do it up until it grabs. And what I do is I come back anything between half a turn and a full turn. So notionally three quarters of a turn. And I do this when I'm doing any rigging in here, like lifting some heavy shit off the floor or over in the other fat cave, putting whatever together, I make sure that there's about one free turn in the shackle. And no matter how the load moves in service then, you, you know, the shackle is free to move like this. It's not coming undone anytime soon. And it's, that's on you. It's on you to make sure. If you're doing a whole bunch of complex manipulation and it's possible for the shackle to come undone, if you look at it and it starts looking like that, then that's on you, dude. What I'm saying is, when you rig something up, just do it finger tight, half a turn, full turn, and then you never have to worry about the load tightening it up in the absence of 
any tools for you to get it back undone out there in some unforeseen situation in the boonies, right? And if you are going to do any of this stuff with baby shackle and tightening it up and stuff like that, then I'd suggest the tools to do that with uh, these babies. These are like, they're called, uh, they're, they're from Knipex and they're called the Pliers Wrench or in German, because it's a German company, the Pliers Wrench, right? They're fantastic. It's like one of these, this one in particular, I think it's the 180, it, uh, 180 millimeters length it can do anything from this kind of little baby shackle because adjustable right so here's approximate baby shackle adjustment right there you go and not only does it do everything a spanner like a wrench would do but it hangs on to the bloody thing as well you don't have to worry about gripping it and holding it in space it grabs it okay and that means you can just tighten that up and then when you've got to deal with this if you have to get one of these undone because it's done itself up if you get it right same deal dude like fantastic right and this thing will even adapt up to tow bar size, okay, so tow ball size. I just checked on both the vehicles out there. This is bigger than the nut on either of my uh, tow balls. So if you've got a problem with one of them coming loose out in service, this will do everything. In fact, if you've got a set of ring open-ended spanners, this, and sometimes you need another spanner to hold the other end of a bolt, so you're working on the nut over here and you need another spanner to hold the head of the bolt, this sort of thing is absolutely brilliant. They're not cheap, they're, they're quite expensive. You can buy them in actually this set of three. They're about, I don't know, 200 bucks or something. And people go, 200 bucks, but lifetime purchase, right? You're not gonna buy another set. You're not gonna need another set. They are one of the best, most high quality uh, devices I can think of. Uh, taking out in the field with me and if I was just going to buy one it would be a toss up between the 180 and the 250 because the 250 will do everything but it seems like just a little bit of overkill on the baby shackle in fact I think it'll go there there you go you can do the baby shackle with the big one, and it's certainly the big one would be better if your tow ball comes loose in service in the field, right? So these things are absolutely brilliant. And the other thing is, if you do get in a situation where your shackle has bound itself right, properly tight, you're going to need something else to hold the other end with, potentially, and I'd suggest big screwdriver should be in everybody's toolkit. And the beauty of this kind of thing is that you can just, you know, you can get there and lever it somehow. You can just lever it free. And the screwdriver's got, you know, guilty of all other kinds of impromptu servicing jobs. In fact, if you get one, and I've just been putting together a tool kit, which is my sort of go-to shove it in the ute kit so I can take it to the other fat cave or somewhere else if I've got to do whatever work I've been working on putting together this sort of go kit if you like and the beauty of this sort of screwdriver is it goes the shank goes all the way through so it's also an impromptu chisel and if you're going to put one screwdriver in your vehicle make sure it's a big beefy one like this with the metal that goes all the way through because that really is it just increases its versatility in the field and if it's possible the hexagonal shaft is really good too because then you can get your pliers wrench and if something, some screw head is totally resistant to, you know, being coaxed out of whatever, you can nudge it free and you can lean on it like this. It's an extremely versatile tool, um, much better than a round shank and, you know, for the extra, whatever it costs the factory to put another, you know, 60, 70 millimetres of shank all the way through and out the other end of the moulded plastic handle, that really is useful as well. And it's a great sort of impromptu pry bar to get a uncooperative shackle free again so that you're not cursing all over town and cutting a perfectly serviceable you know, nylon strap off at the eye because you just can't get the freaking shackle undone. But the pro tip, come back half 
to one turn every time, but only during modes of operation where the shackle is going to be under load. For the other mode of operation where it's a safety device, make sure it's done up tight.